physical media has been on its way out for a long time. Within the past 20 years, physical games, movies, TV shows, and even photos have gone out of style. Or have they? When compact discs matched vinyl record sales in 1989, we all assumed we'd never see vinyl records again. But soon enough, by 2015, they'd become more popular than they were in the late 1980s. Hipsters, am I right? Well, it's not that simple. It's more that compact discs have been normalized as the primary way of purchasing music. And while they're on their way out, they're still very popular. Records, on the other hand, are seen as retro, but still functional and have a lot more connotation assigned to them. So I guess, in a way, it is because of hipsters, but can we just agree to never use that word again? Thank you. Connotation aside, CDs are digital and records are analog, and analog media is making a huge comeback right now. In a world where we have perfected digital versions of analog technologies, we've also stripped away any sense of charm and oddity to what we consume. Indie films went from looking like this to looking like this. More detailed and perfect, yes, but also extremely flat and boring looking. Yeah, you could effectively make it sound like whatever artist you're listening to is performing right in front of you just by using your cell phone and playing some music. But do you really want it to sound like that? This is why musical trends like lo-fi are catching on. Or, sorry, 24-7 lo-fi hip-hop radio beats to study, game, and relax to for teens with several undiagnosed mental health issues whose parents divorced when they were just- Musical trends like lo-fi, which are usually simple beats with a thick layer of analog distortion, are a direct result of the overprocessed nature of our media today. And this is not just happening with music. For the past few years, music videos and films have begun utilizing VHS or ancient video equipment as a style. And it's the same concept. It's a direct result of how digital video has essentially been perfected at this point. And guess what? This lo-fi trend is hitting photography too, in the form of Polaroids. So let's take it back a bit. Okay, let's take it back to the 1940, no, let's not do that. These things have been around for way too long, and I'm not making this video over 40 minutes in length, so let's just put this back and focus on modern Polaroid history. So let's do that. I'm f***ing lazy. Let's take it back to 1977, when Polaroid cameras peaked in popularity. At the time, Polaroid cameras looked like this and had relatively slow developing film. But there was also no autofocus, and these things cost over $1,000 adjusted for inflation. These weren't user-friendly, and with the advent of friendlier and cheaper knockoffs, Polaroid had to get creative. Their market share was declining by 1979, so a completely new design was in order. This is when they came up with the Polaroid 600 series of cameras, the ones you're familiar with and the ones that are still used today. Day. This is the Polaroid Spirit 600, but they also sold cameras with not embarrassing names, like the Polaroid Spice Cam. What are we gonna do now? The Spice Cam from Polaroid. In all seriousness, the Polaroid 600 series of cameras was a massive success for Polaroid and became a mainstay in pop culture. There was a Polaroid for everybody, with too many versions to count. But then, by 2004, camera phones were out selling cameras themselves, and by 2008, Polaroid filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The family memories that used to be taken on Polaroids were now captured on cell phones, and the professionals who were still clinging on to their old Polaroid cameras had long since jumped ship to new flashy digital cameras. By 2010, Nokia released a short film which was captured entirely on a cell phone, and it was clear smartphone cameras would only get better from there. But there was just something missing. One hour photo has since been taken out of most drugstores, and unless you jumped through a lot of hoops to still get Polaroid film as it was getting more and more difficult to find at that point, there was essentially no way to get instant, tangible photos you could hold in your hand. This was a problem for a few reasons, but the main reason is that our cavemen brains like being able to touch things. Without Polaroids and without disposable cameras, after a few years we began craving having tangible photos again. After a few companies tried and failed bringing instant cameras back, Fujifilm got more aggressive with their own line of instant cameras. They had the Fujifilm Instax, which had been around since 1998, but only got major success in the 2010s after they had no competition. With the release of the Instax Mini 8, which used innovative sales tactics like focusing on kawaii, whatever that means, they became the face of instant film, basically. So 
where does this leave Polaroid? Well, in 2008, a Dutch company named The Impossible Project purchased the filmmaking machinery from Polaroid's closing factories and begun producing film of their own. In the meantime, Polaroid as a company was busy having a stroke. They begun licensing out the Polaroid name to any company willing to pay them a few Chuck E. Cheese tokens. So you begun getting Polaroid DVD players and TVs and cell phones because that makes sense. And by 2010, Lady Gaga was appointed as the creative director of the company, what the f And by 2011, Polaroid released their instant photo printers for cell phones, designed by Polaroid and Lady Gaga. So the printer's on right now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a photo of all of you with my camera phone. Smile, you're so famous. Smile, you're on instant film. While all of that was happening, the Impossible Project was trucking along making Polaroid camera film. Well, the actual Polaroid company was not, and still does not, make Polaroid camera film. By the time 2016 rolled around, the Impossible Project had become successful enough to be sold in American retail stores alongside the Fujifilm Instax. By 2017, the Impossible Project was rebranded to Polaroid Originals and began manufacturing their own Polaroid cameras. Not digital ones like Polaroid the company is currently making, but real Polaroid film cameras. This is the Polaroid Originals One Step Plus, a modern version of the Polaroid One Step from 1977. It connects to your phone, has full Bluetooth functionality, manual controls, anything you'd ever need, and it's all been modernized, but still uses old Polaroid film. I'll have to review this camera sometime. It is a very interesting camera, but essentially it is a return to form of sorts for Polaroid. Not the Polaroid company, just some random Dutch company that's doing a good job. They also sell refurbished vintage Polaroids and essentially they're bringing things back in a way. These things are sold in stores and they're quite popular at the moment. So where does this leave the whole thing about perfection and rejection of highly produced media? Well, Polaroid represents a time where everything was a bit more raw because it had to be. In the whole connotation and emotional pull towards analog technology, that's not the whole reason why people buy these things. It's also because we just want some easy to get tangible photos. We like being able to touch the photos, keep them in boxes, scrapbooks, all those things. And you can't do that with digital photos unless you print them out. And that's a whole hassle. So this is just so much easier and a way to do that for most people. So now I think it's time we wait and see if Polaroids are going to be a fad that only lasts for a few years, or if they're going to have the staying power that records and other analog media has. So as you can probably tell, a lot of time has passed between recordings. Besides the B-roll, most of this video was filmed last year and I've been sitting on the recordings for quite some time. I wanted the new year to pass before I started editing together this new content as I really wanted to start fresh with this year, not release anything before the year passed. That being said, I completely underestimated how long it would take to edit this video together. I really did not anticipate this video being as long and as complicated as it is, but I am really proud of how it turned out, so I hope you guys are really enjoying this video despite it not being tech related and you know it being a departure from what I normally make. Uh, you're going to see a lot of videos like this in terms of style and production value, so get ready for a lot of these types of videos to become what I'm going to be making. So not tech related, but hopefully still interesting. But I want to let you guys know, while I have your attention, that the YouTube algorithm does something weird when a channel changes names, as far as I'm aware that is. They don't tell us these things, they just let us all sort of guess what the hell we're doing on this platform. So I don't know, but as far as I'm aware, um, when a channel changes their name, YouTube starts suppressing that channel in the subscription feed. So if you're subscribed to this channel, you won't, chances are you won't see my channel, my future videos in your subscription feed after I change my name. So. A way to avoid this is to do the thing that all of these clickbait channels tell you to do, myself included now. Um, just click the notification bell, it should be right next to the subscription, the subscribe button thing uh, below the title. Just click the notification bell and that should theoretically skip over any algorithmic sorting you see in your subscription feed. Again, no one knows for sure what the hell is happening, but 
It's the best guess at this point. So if you really did like this video, you like the departure from my existing content, and you like where I'm heading with my channel, um, click the notification bell and you will see my future videos in your subscription feed after I change my channel name to Hayden Quinn, my real name. So anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for your everlasting support and really the amount of attention you give in this channel despite my awful upload schedule and my super erratic nature. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I will see you in a few weeks with a new video, not in a few months. Bye. I can't cope with